What's up, game players? God darn it. How are you guys doing? I'd like to welcome you guys to the Analog Circle Podcast, episode number 61. Woo! I'm your host, Keon Mitchell. And as always, God dang, let me tell you, thank you for showing up and tuning in, listening. To another episode of the podcast, because I'm going to tell you something right here and right now, and my voice is really, really hoarse a little bit. <coughs> I was out partying. Oh, yeah, I was partying yesterday, man. I went to the daggone brew at the zoo. That was the name of it, Brew at the Daggone Zoo here in Baltimore. Man, it was a heck of a time, God dag it. But uh, let me get back on track. Um, I want to thank you once again, listeners out there for tuning in to another episode of the podcast and as always if you want to leave your feedback you want to leave some questions for me i'm happy to answer or if you just want to chime in and just tell me how you feel about a question that i'm posing you can always feel free to call in at 443 443- 2614607 or if you want to just email the show that is always an option it is always open and you can email the show at the analog circle podcast at gmail.com whoa now speaking of the feedback section that's where i love to get the show started right there Because that is just, that's the heartbeat to me of the show. When I can just interact with you listeners out there. Because man, let me tell you, I appreciate you. God dog, I do. Because if you didn't tune in, what is the show worth doing if nobody is listening? So man, let's get started. I want to go to my guy. To the guy who's actually been the heartbeat. Who's been the pulse of this section of the show, Mr. Cody Clark. Man, thank you, brother, for chiming in this week. Oh, my goodness. Let's start it off with you. Now, the name of his email is called Maybe with a question mark. Now, last week, you guys might remember, I was asking the question, Will the PlayStation 4 Pro hold back the Xbox Scorpio? So this is what I'm going to do. I got several emails this weekend. Woo! Brother was on fire. Whenever I could get more than one, man, it's a bonus. So I'm going to read them all first. And then I'm going to try to give my thoughts all at once. Man, that's going to be hard, brother. Well, but let's go ahead and get started and let's see if uh, if I can pull this off. Starting off with Mr. Cody Clark again. He says, seeing as BioWare did that thing with Mass Effect, saying that their game would not be optimized for the Scorpio. I guess it could be a possibility that this could hold the Scorpio back. But they also don't want to have the Xbox One be a huge step backwards since the Xbox One and One S also have to run the same software. They have to make it run on each system. And even though Xbox has tools to help optimize it for the Scorpio, well, maybe part of that $4 billion loan Sony took out this year was to spread some green, asking studios to keep all of the playing field leveled. Whoa, man. Um, did the P that was me saying, whoa, man, that wasn't part of his email, but, uh, continuing on, he says, did the PlayStation 2 hold back games on the OG Xbox? Yeah, quite a few. It will only take one jawbreaker of a game to get people to say they don't want it. Plus any games that have the community to mod them will resolve that more and more. Microsoft games seem to have that in the background. Mr. Cody Clark, thank you once again 
for always chiming in on this section of the podcast. I really, I mean deeply and truly appreciate it, brother. Now, I'm going to move on to, well, well, first, no, man, I'm not going to do that. Bump that. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to just go ahead and do it the way that I always do it, because that's only fair. Now, Cody, man, brother, you brought up uh, something very interesting. I must say that when I heard BioWare come out, and say that they were not going to optimize Mass Effect Andromeda for the Scorpio, but yet they optimized it. Now, I don't know how great it was optimized for it, but they did have a PlayStation 4 Pro version of the game. That really raised the red flag for me. I said, look, if you have, this is my thinking. If you have the console to do it, You have the extra power under the hood. Why wouldn't you want to do that? To give the game player a better, not necessarily a better game per se, but take advantage of some things that could enhance your your journey with the game, your experience with the game. Now, I got to say, Cody, outside of that, this $4 billion, brother, oh, man. That's a heck of a question mark. That's a very interesting theory. Could Mike, I mean, not Microsoft, could Sony had maybe lined these studios with a little bit of the green to say, hey, just keep it on par. Now, also understand that people are saying that you have to make it parody. PlayStation and Sony They have to, I said PlayStation and Sony, Sony and Microsoft have to make sure that their older systems can run these games as well. They have to be on parity with each other, which I can't buy it, brother. I know that's probably what it is, but man, if that's the case, what's the point of bringing out the Scorpio if it's gonna be held back anyway by the previous console. I'll tell you what, Cody, once again, brother, thank you for this email, but I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the next one, but I'm gonna circle back around, though. I guarantee it. Now, moving on to another email from a person that I have not heard from in quite some time, since around January, I think it was. But Mr. Michael Chikunski is back, man. What's going on, brother? I hope you have been doing well. Now, the name of his email is, Will Scorpio be held back by PlayStation 4 Pro with a question mark? Here we go. He says, hello, Keon. What's going on, Michael? He says, just want to chime in on your question for this week. In the case of Destiny 2, I think it might be the OG Xbox One holding back the Scorpio version more than the PlayStation 4 Pro. With the game being online multiplayer and competitive at times, giving one player base any sort of advantage might be considered unfair. Parity between the Xbox One and Scorpio versions eliminates the perceived problem. I hear you, Mike. I hear you, brother. Continuing on with his email, he says, as for other, other games, I guess it all depends on the developer and type of game. I see dedicated single player games, modes taking advantage of the extra power the new systems provide more than the multiplayer ones. They could design games to the lowest common spec for each system to save on development time and cost. They could take advantage of each system's strengths if they wanted to, or they could just design for the regular PlayStation 4 and Xbox One and hope for the best. I think we'll see games that fall into every category, and angry gamers will complain about something anyway. Keep up the great work and enjoy your Memorial Day weekend, Mike J. Brother, let me tell you something, Mike. I appreciate this email. Thank you very much for your thoughts. Very articulate. Very. But I got to tell you, Mike, we're going to circle back. To what I was talking about in my last point with uh, with uh, Cody Clark's email. Now, if this is the case, 
with these new consoles. And it's a very good point, Mike, you brought out. When you said that you think that the Xbox One is a bigger problem than the PlayStation 4, the original Xbox One S, you know, the original. I agree with that. Of course, it's no way that a, a One S could compare to a PlayStation 4 Pro. But my thing is, I understand they have to keep it on parity. Everything has to run smooth. It's multiplayer. You want to put everybody on a playing, a even playing field. But my thought is, I have to circle it back to the initial question that I asked when these consoles were in development. And this is for the Pro and for the Scorpio. If this is the case, how much are these consoles really worth having? How much are they worth having? Are they really worth having or not really? Because this is the thing. If you mean to tell me, now this is me talking, I'm not quoting anybody, this is me. If you tell me that you have this powerful beast of a machine, and you tell me, but guess what though, we can't really unlock all of the power, not yet, because we have to keep it on parallel with this other system that's older, a little slower, not quite up to snuff like this new one, I have to say Microsoft then why am I going to buy this system if this could be potentially the case? Now, I understand, like Mike said, this seems to possibly be a bigger problem with multiplayer games. Single-player games, maybe it will be different. And only time will tell. But if that's the case with Microsoft and Sony, for that matter, then you have to tell me a reason why these are worth having if, they're going to still be held back by the older technology. I can't buy that. I cannot subscribe to it. I say, if you're going to do this, because if you pay $500 for a Scorpio, then you are going to expect to get that next level of gameplay. Even though, even though it's supposed to just be a mid-gen upgrade. But 12 gigs versus 8 gigs of RAM in your system, that's a huge bump. That is huge. So you have to show me as not only just the game player, but a consumer why I should buy your product. If it's a possibility, it's going to be held back. Now, I know we're still very early. E3 is coming up very, very soon. And we're going to get the answers that we all want to know about the Xbox Scorpio. But only time will tell. But I tell you, when I saw the Destiny thing, the first thing I had to think in my mind was, will this affect the Scorpio? Which is why I brought up the question, it's not a fanboy thing with me. I'm not a fanboy stan. I'm not a Sony stan. I'm not an Xbox stan. I'm not a fan bigger of the two. Well, no, no. I do prefer Xbox. I have to say that. It's the one I prefer. But what have I been on more? I've been on the PlayStation 4 quite a bit more. So we'll have to see how this whole thing plays out. E3 is coming up in a few short weeks. Oh, I'm looking forward to it. But Mr. Michael Chikunsky, brother, thank you for the email. It is so greatly appreciated, man. Please write in a little bit more for me, man. I love hearing from you, brother. Goodness gracious. Now, last email. Yeah, I dug. I'm sweating like a mother right now. I got to tell y'all, man, got to wipe my brow. But the last email, and this is definitely last but not, not, not least. We have a new emailer. This is amazing. This is quite awesome. Uh, it, the, the name of the email, man, I'm catching my breath, God dog. Give me a second. Is uh, Kelsey Stevenson. Now, the name of their email is Love the Podcast. Wow, I, I appreciate that, Kelsey. Thank you. Uh, their email reads I am also a truck driver who loves video games and making music. Golly, we got two things in common. That's beautiful, man. That's lovely. They say, so I'm even more happy about finding this podcast. 
The first episode I listened to was the one where you interviewed Goose and was and and I I was God dog and I'm messing your email up, Kelsey. Let me start this over with respect. Okay. The email reads, I am also a truck driver who loves video games and making music. So I'm even more happy about finding this podcast. The first episode I listened to was the one where you interviewed Goose and I was hooked. LOL. Great episode. Shout out to you, Goose. I've made a few YouTube vids also. But the question I have for you is, do you ever play first person shooters? If so, which ones? I'm currently addicted to Rainbow Six Siege and trying to get competitive. I used to play competitively in Black Ops 2. And if first person shooters really isn't your thing, what would your favorite genre of game be? Last question. Have you ever thought about playing with your supporters? That's a good question. It'd be awesome to play some PlayStation 4 with you. LOL. But that'll do, that'll do it for me for now. Sorry for the lengthy message. Please never stop making podcasts and I can't wait for the next one. Kelsey, I have to say, God, dog, this is like heart touching. I'm serious. I really, really appreciate the email. Like I said, I'm sorry. I butchered it in the beginning. But uh, to answer your first question, man, oh man, I absolutely love first person shooters it's actually one of my favorite genre genres one of them my favorite first person shooter of all time and everybody that knows this is probably saying oh here we go again but bullet storm kelsey was absolutely a blast for me that game along with call of duties i i definitely enjoy call of duties they're great you know well sometimes not all the time but sometimes they're great um, but, uh, outside of that, my favorite genre, action adventure, man, you know, like, uh, the Uncharted series, you know, um, oh, Doom, by the way, this is another first person shooter. God, dog, game's a lot of fun, man. Uh, Doom, but, um, basically I'm open to everything though, Kelsey, really, even if it's, um, only thing I'm not really open to is RTSs. I can't do it. I just can't do the RTSs. That's not it. But the second question that you asked, I would love to play with the people that support the podcast. I would. The thing is, I, as much as I love gaming, as passionate as I am about gaming, I'm not that good, Kelsey. I'm really not. So when I get on a team and I'm playing Call of Duty, you know, I mean, I'm getting the heck blown out of me, man. I mean, they, they, they're shooting me up. You know, every couple seconds I jump, I respawn, and I'm back down again. I mean, Titanfall 2 was a heck of a fun time. But God dog, man, competitively, I don't know if you want me on your team. But I would love to. Matter of fact, matter of fact, listeners. Just just to let you guys know, if you want to hit me up, because I'm not going to lie to you, I'm going to be a scrub on your team, okay? But if y'all want to help a brother get better at a game, you can actually find me on Xbox One under the, the username Corked Emperor. That's spelled C-O-R-K-E-D-E-M-P-E-R-O-R-33, no spaces. And on the PlayStation 4 side, you can find me under John Doe 1579. That's J O N D O E 1579. If you want, please hit me up and let me know, man. Let me know that, um, you know, you're a listener of the show and maybe you can help me get my skills up online. But as always, Kelsey, Thank you so much. Don't let it be your last time writing in. I'm always happy to hear from the listeners out there. And thank you so much. And hopefully, please don't take offense to me reading your email last. That does not discredit, you know, or make you any less of a, of a contributor to this section of the podcast. But I greatly, greatly appreciate the feedback. Thank you so, so much. Woo, man, I, I can't believe it. That's three emails that rarely happens man um but okay let me get back on track <clears throat> okay okay it was a couple more emails but uh not emails but they were some comments that were left over on n4g it's totally different than actually getting emailed in but the show was starting to move 
really long right now. So I'm going to go ahead and try to make it up because like I say, as always, an hour is the time that we have. So let's go ahead and get started very quickly into what we all come here for. And I might have to move a little fast, folks, but that is the gaming news that went down. Let's start it off with some Bioware news. Now, it has been confirmed via an interview with Eurogamer by video game writer Alex Kennedy. A new Dragon Age game is in the works. Now Kennedy didn't give very didn't give any very get, get very heavy into it. God dang it. <laughs> very heavy into the details about the game, but he did say this and I'm going to quote him. I have been given considerable autonomy to work on a storyline bit of lore, which is well segregated from other parts of the game. He continued to say it's nothing that grandiose, nothing that grandiose, but it is distinct. It's a bit of lore, which has not been addressed much to date in Dragon Age. End of quote. Now, uh, Bioware, of course, has not come out to confirm this, but hopefully for you guys that are into the franchise, you will be getting another Dragon Age coming soon. Hey, who knows? Maybe EA just might talk about it. They just might talk about it on the E3 stage. Moving on to the next story. Now, this is a sad one, but not one that we were not expecting. I think many of us thought this could happen. But into some rock star news. Well, it's official. Now, no more speculation. No more guessing. No more hopeful thinking. Rockstar has delayed Red Dead Redemption 2. Now, here is the official statement, and I quote, we are very sorry for any disappointment this delay causes, but we are firm believers in delivering a game only when it is ready. End of quote. Also, on a Rockstar blog, they did say that they are excited to bring us more details about the game this summer. So what does that say to me? Summertime, okay? E3, well not quite officially summer, but warmer months. Who knows? Maybe. And we know that Rockstar, they never show up at E3. They, they're never there. You know, but who knows? Maybe. Just maybe. How cool would it be that at the end of Sony's press conference, they say the old one, two, oh, one more thing we forgot. And then all of a sudden the lights dim down again. And, well, they're probably still going to be dim, I guess, at this point. But they go ahead and they roll that footage of Red Dead Redemption 2. I don't know if Marston is still in this one. I don't know if it's a pre, a pre, uh, what, what do you call it? Um, a dag on the, the, the story before the new story got dag at a prequel. But how awesome would it be? to see some real in-game footage at Sony's press conference. This would be wonder bar. It would be excellent. But either way, we got to wait till spring of 2018 to get our hands on this game. I don't think many of us are very, very surprised by this. I think it was to be expected. Moving on into some more news. Now, actually into some more Sony news. Now, we know that E3, right? Like I just said, E3 is just close by. And at every E3 event, we expect to see some awesome games. I mean, I'm hoping Red Dead is there. And we also, we expect some release dates. Sony, can you give us some release dates for some of these games, God dog it, please? But last year, a very interesting game called Days Gone was shown. Now, ever since then, the project has been pretty silent. Not a lot of talk. Up until now. Now, now according to the voice actor, who's Sam Whitner, who actually plays the protagonist that goes by the name of Deacon St. John, he said, he said that the game will be present at E3 in a big way. Now, if you didn't know, the game is being developed by Sony Ben Studios, which was the studio behind Siphon Filter. How freaking crazy is that? I forgot all about that. 
Now, Sony hasn't come out to say anything, so don't take this as fact. Kind of take it at the, at the size of a mustard seed grain right now. But how awesome would it be the day's gone since this guy says it's going to show up in a big way. We're going to go ahead and go with what he's saying is fact, even though it is not. But if what he's saying is true and it's going to show up in a big way, how awesome would it be that this game gets a release date for this year? How amazing would that be? I was asking, you know, before, was Sony going to have any more triple A games coming out this year? Man, I know a lot of people are kind of cool off of Days Gone, saying another zombie game. I don't need it. I don't want it. Ah, I don't want that. But I'm saying the game does look pretty interesting to say the least. How awesome would it be that they say coming in fall of 2017? I might have to go pre-order it. I think I would. I think it'd be great. But anyway, we'll see how this whole thing comes out in the wash later on in a few weeks. We will see. Moving on into the next story, we're going to go into some Xbox news. Oh, shucks. Now, Xbox Game Pass will be releasing on June 1st for $10 a month. Now, the first month out, you will have 112 games to choose from. Now, some of these include, now these were the standouts for me. I mean, some of it, you got a lot of Xbox 360 games on there. And I understand it's the first month. You got to give them time to get the arsenal up and running. But it was kind of etchy and sketchy. But some of the ones that actually stood out for me were Halo 5, Gears 1, 2, 3, and Judgment, and uh, uh, the Ultimate Edition is actually on there. You got Sunset Overdrive on there, Saints Row 4, Reelected, etc. Now, if you're a gold member, though, you actually can look forward to getting a 14-day trial right now for free. So hopefully you listeners out there knew about that and you jump on this and maybe, just maybe, this will be the thing that you will benefit from. For me personally, not quite something I need. I mean, I'm getting a lot of the new stuff that comes out. Some of these games, like I said, they're a little dated. Saints Row 4, a couple years old. You know, Halo 5, I got a little bit of time on them. But, um... For the person that's a casual game, not even just casual, but a person who just doesn't have the money like that. Not everybody has $60 to spray out at one time. For that $60, you could actually get six months worth of this Xbox Game Pass, which means you'll have access to over a 100 games a month. So that is awesome. It's great for people who need it, who are balling on a gaming budget. That's what it is, balling on a gaming budget. How cool is it to tell your friends? If you, you know, you're, you're, you're a college student, you're a high school student, middle school student, you just don't have the money like that. But you might can muster up $10 a month. How cool would it be to say, hey, man, listen to me. I got a 100 games on my Xbox right now ready to go. What do you have? Now, of course, like I said, it's not for me, but for someone who's strapped for cash. This could be a good thing. Moving on to the next story. Took too much time on that one. Now, in some Microsoft E3 news, this is another interesting story. God dang it, as I sweat. Microsoft is reporting that their E3 press briefing will be streamed in 4K through its Beam service, which has actually been renamed Mixer which is Microsoft's live gaming streaming platform, similar to Twitch and YouTube. But the difference is the latency is less than one second, which makes it much, 
much more easier to interact with your interviewers in real time. Also, I believe they're doing something where you can actually stream four people at one time and you can actually switch to each of the four players' perspective of the game. This could be a game changer, folks. It really could be. Mixer, I've tried it out. It's cool. I don't have a lot of people that look at me. Maybe two people at the max have looked at my stream. Uh, shout out to Mastino. What's going on, brother? Thank you for the support. But, um, uh, I will say that um, outside of the mixer part of it, the 4K, they're going to be putting E3 in 4K. So you will actually be able to see the benefits, the benefits, God dog it, of what the Xbox Scorpio will be able to bring to the table. Now, I hope... Like I said, I hope it's not held back by the previous Xbox One because that's just not going to get me pumped. It's going to deflate my daggone, my daggone thoughts of what the system could be and the grandeur of what it could be. But for people that have 4K TVs that are balling like that, because I'm going to tell you, I got a 1080p. Yeah, I don't have 4K, not yet, brother. I'm working on it, okay? But for you guys that have one, definitely check this out. You'll be able to see the results of what the console will be able to do. I think this is excellent. Hopefully, Sony will do this. I hope so. I mean, why not? If you got the PlayStation 4K Pro, you should be trying to push the same agenda, god dang it. But we'll see what happens. But uh, this is great news. Moving on into some Nintendo news. Now... Oh my goodness, it's become official. The Nintendo Switch, oh, this, this, this could be big, man. This could be kind of big. Now, the Switch will now have Unreal Engine full support. Now, this is due to a February update 4.15. But since then, Epic has pushed out a fully featured native support for the Switch in version 4. Point one six. Now, in order to work with the Unreal Engine on the console, developers have to get Nintendo's approval first. Oh, Nintendo is something. Once that happens, developers will have free access to the engine. Now, you might be saying, man, Keon, why the heck are you so excited about this? You don't even like Nintendo. Guess what? Guess what? I don't. I don't like Nintendo in the sense that I don't like the way they do business. Okay, you come out with a console. All right, now, now I'm not even talking about the daggone mini. I'm getting past that right now. But you come out with a console, the Switch, okay? And it's in high demand. It's something that many, many people want. But you go into the store, you're trying to find it. They're saying we don't have any. We have a shipment coming in, maybe it's seven or eight. I don't know. But it's not in the store readily available. Now, we know that Microsoft and Sony, they always, after about the first month or two, the console is in the store. You can go in, you can pick it up and buy it and walk out. Nintendo, for years, man, I mean for daggone years, has made it so hard to get their console in the first few months. It really burns me up, man. God dog it, it does. I mean, so much so, Nintendo has said again in another report. I forgot to even write this down. I'm just remembering it. They said that they're going to ramp up the daggone uh, 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 production of the Switch. Saying that they're going to have 18 million out by 2018, by the end of their fiscal year in March of 2018. 18 million because it's in such high demand. Nintendo, I've been waiting, brother. I've been waiting to try to find one. Maybe it's Baltimore. Maybe y'all don't like the area I'm in. But I go out there, I look, and I can't find it. But getting back to the point, that's why I don't like Nintendo. But I never want to see Nintendo fail. I want to see them succeed. I just want them to get better with some of their business practices. God darn, man, it's 2017, Nintendo. Come on. But the thing that I'm excited about, about this game, not this game, god dang it, about this doggone uh, uh, engine, is have you guys, I, I, I highly, highly recommend that if you have not, go on YouTube and look up Mario in, uh, in the Unreal Engine, or look up Zelda in the Unreal Engine, I mean, these games look amazing, I mean, they look good, 
I mean really, really sensational. If Nintendo would run a Mario game or run a Zelda game in the Unreal Engine, God dog, it would be amazing. I'm telling anybody, look it up, and you'll see why I am excited that Nintendo is getting the Unreal Engine support. Nintendo, use it. Use it to your daggone best ability because I think that their games could really shine in that engine. I'm imagining, oh my goodness, a Metroid game running an Unreal Engine. Whew. Man, it could be amazing. Now, I understand they got four gigs of RAM, which is another problem I have with Nintendo. They're always behind the curve. They never want to stay standard with their competition. Believe me, you're in competition because y'all are all in the same space vying for the consumer's money. So, Nintendo, I don't want to hear that you're not competing. You are, whether you want to believe it or not. But if they can make this work, Man, I'm, I'm just rambling on way too much about Nintendo. But if they can make this work and use it to the best of their ability, use it to their advantage, this could be huge for Nintendo. Moving on into some VR news. Now, according to a report, actually it's PlayStation VR news. Now, according to a report from VR Focus, it looks like Sony Santa Monica is working on a VR title. Now, the source also added that it will be revealed soon, and they know it will go well with the core PlayStation audience. Question mark is over my head right now, because I have to say that if, now you guys know Sony Santa Monica, they're the God of War team. If they're working on a VR title, I mean, I got to give a little bit of a head nod, like, mm, this might be interesting. And the fact that they said that we're going to hear, we're going to see a reveal of it very soon. Could this be another thing that would be on Sony's E3 stage? Is it possible? How cool would it be? I don't know how cool it would be. I don't know. It could be a little questionable. But in my mind, the way I'm seeing it, how nice would it be if God of War, the new one, I had some kind of mode. And I mean, you can't make it but so gimmicky. You got to make it make sense. But if Kratos is fighting against a character, and you can actually see the way he's scaling up the character to really get the scope and the size of the foe that you're fighting against. It could really add another dimension to the game. Now, I, like I said, no more information was given about this quote-unquote VR title that is in the works, but hopefully... Hopefully, Sony will have something on it on their E3 stage. I tell you, Sony Santa Monica has not really made any bad games. I can't recall them just making a travesty of a game before. But I'm very, very interested in this one. I hope it goes over well. They seem to think that it's going to go over very well with the PlayStation audience. So we'll have to stay tuned to see what this is about moving on to the next story now if you were looking forward to hearing about more details for beyond good and evil at e3 then you may be let down now this is according to michael ansel he says, after answering a fan's question, this actually comes at the answer to the question from a fan uh, via Instagram. He said uh, this. He said uh, he wasn't sure because the fan was asking him whether they're going to hear more about the game at E3. He says he wasn't sure E3 would be the best place to showcase the next Beyond Good and Evil. But he went on to say, we're working on the game. So sometime this year, you should hear about it. End of the quote. So, so many questions with this game I have. For instance, is Jade in this game? Or is her father 
the main character in this game? Is it a prequel? Is it a mixture of the past and the present with the game? Is PJ a little pig? Or is he still an adult pig? Because in the in in, in one of the captions of the game, you see the guy who who uh seems to be Jade's dad in the picture with PJ on his shoulder and he just smiling, you know, PJ all happy like a little baby pig on his shoulder. You know, he's happy. But I wanna know, you know, is that gonna be the the game? Is it gonna be an origin story or what? So many questions. Another big question. Is this a switch? exclusive did nintendo wrap up the rights to have this as a exclusive on the console maybe maybe if that is true maybe that could actually answer the question as to why he said it might not be the best place to show it off at e3 because we know nintendo as always they're not doing a a live show of E3. I believe it's going to be another treehouse, but they're not hitting the E3 stage. And it's okay. It works for Nintendo. People love the treehouse. I don't. I will straight up say I don't like it. I wish they would hit the E3 stage like everybody else, but I guess they're too good. Oh my goodness. But anyway, maybe because they're not doing that, it might not have the same impact that he wants it to have. Or... Maybe it's just not in a state where it would look good enough for the audience to take it in and love it. I don't know. But either way, we'll be getting some more answers about this later on in the year. Now, moving into some Nintendo news, actually, I I just had to add this in there because I forgot to talk about this last week. My hat has to go off to Nintendo. I have to say. You are doing amazing right now. You're doing excellent. People are loving your system. They're applauding your system. Because I got to say, for the second month, the Switch has won NPD numbers. So with that, I have to give Nintendo a round of applause. Because like I said, I have my gripes with Nintendo. I have things that I don't like about Nintendo. But the last thing I want to see is see them go away. Because as much as I do have a beef with them, the industry needs Nintendo. We need them. They innovate more than any other company on the hardware. Now, I mean, software and, you know, as far as, well, not the hardware per se, but let's just say peripherals. They do the most in that area. They're very strong in that. Now, of course, Microsoft and Sony, they have the horsepower. Their consoles are always strong and at the cutting edge of console technology. Nintendo is not. But what they bring to the gaming space is very, very necessary. Without Nintendo, where would the analog daggone controller be? I mean, where would it be? We might not have gotten it. Maybe somebody would have got it right eventually, but Nintendo created the analog sticks. They created the rumble technology. Okay, you gotta give them credit. They've done the thing with the Switch. That's another big possible game changer. Actually making it so you have a console slash handheld all in the same device. So Nintendo, I congratulate you for making it another month for being the best selling console out there on the NPD charts. I just hope, Nintendo, that you finally get enough of these in the store so people can just pick them up freely that's all now the big now that now this will be the big question that we all have to ask ourselves nintendo was off to a very very good start and i'm very happy to see it but will they still have the same momentum this time next year i'm just asking y'all this isn't the question for the week but i just want to know that as well will this same momentum go into this time next year because when any product is scarce it's hard to find you see it and it's like whoa 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 whoa, whoa. i gotta get that because i don't know when i'm gonna see it again let me get it right now 
So I just want to know that. But for now, Nintendo, you're winning. Congratulations. Moving on into the last story for this week, folks. Oh, now into some rumor news. That is a little bit of the rumor going on. Now, Phantom Whale. Uh, does that sound familiar to you? Uh, yeah, me neither. But apparently, this is the latest collaboration between Sony and From Software. Now, the story about this originates, actually originated from a Reddit post. Now, apparently, the game will have an ancient Aztec theme and will focus on hand-to-hand -hand combat and will also feature weapons, but the weapons won't be the main draw to the game. Instead, you'll be able to customize your fighter. And even though that's a departure, it's still considered to be Souls-like. This could be another title, another game. Now, as always, like I say, though, whoa, 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 before I even go into my theories and my thoughts, take this with a mustard seed of hope and truth because we already saw that the, the last show I did the last podcast when I was talking about the guy from Bungie saying yeah we're actually releasing a week before Red Dead Redemption bam that got bumped like the next day I was like holy smoke man that was fast you know when they came out and uh Rockstar said no it's gonna be in 2018 so you know just take that off the table you ain't got to worry all of you guys can breathe for the rest of the year we're gonna let y'all live that's what Rockstar basically said because man when that game was when that game comes out it's shutting everything down stay clear out of the way of it but like I said take this with a daggone mustard seed of truth but this would be amazing to see on the E3 stage for you guys that are into the Souls games. I'm not. I'm not going to do it. If you want to call me, if you want to know a game that I'm game dodging on, I'm game dodging on any Souls game. I'm not going to do it. I'm not. I'm not into playing games for frustration. It's not for me. But for you guys that like this kind of game, they love to just pull your hair out and I'm bald so I have nothing to pull but my daggone beard hair okay but if you're into these kind of games then I'm sure you will be looking forward to some more news on Phantom Whale which is the name of this so called quote unquote game but once again take it with a mustard seed of truth guys that is it for the gaming news this week. But that's okay. Because stay tuned. We will be back with the final section of the podcast. Right after this week's video game theater. Stay tuned guys. <laughs> Of the living. Here, let me. 
I'll be fine. You almost drowned. You need to... I said I'm fine. Just... Excuse me, man. Do you hear that? Oh, it's music. Yeah, we're going. I just... Oh. Need to... Okay, I, I won't be long. I won't be long, Mr. DeWitt. Young girl. <laughs> ah, who is it, brother? And welcome back, guys. Welcome back. Now, we are in the final section of the podcast. And just like with every other podcast, I have to ask you, the listener. A question. And the question that I have for you guys, it is timely. It is a question that I need to know your answers to. And the question that I have to ask you guys this week is this. What are your E3 predictions for 2017? That's right. You got Sony, Microsoft, Nintendo, what predictions do you have? I want to start it off just very, very briefly. I'm going to run through all three, but I'm going to keep it very minimal because time is of the essence. Now, for Nintendo, I'm guessing, and I'm really, really hoping for this, that Nintendo announces a new Metroid game that would be sensational. I need that. Now, I don't want the first-person Metroid. I want the side-scrolling Metroid game that we grew up on on the Nintendo and the Super Nintendo. That's what I want. Super Metroid was an amazing game. Can you please bring that back on that side of the fence, the side-scrolling side? I think Nintendo was going to do it on top of that. I think Nintendo was going to talk about their online, their online uh, 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 service a little bit more, a little more deeply, deeper details. I think they're going to talk about that a little bit. They might talk about another uh, Luigi's Mansion or something of that sort. But that's what I think about Nintendo. I don't have a lot to say about them, but you can. Please do. Moving on to, let's say, Microsoft. I think Microsoft is going to have some VR technology shown on their stage. Now, I don't know how well it's going to go over, but I'm thinking that Fallout 4, oh, it just came to me like an epiphany. I think Fallout 4 is going to be shown in VR on the daggone Xbox stage. I think on top of that, Scorpio. Now, I know in the back of my mind, it's not going to be, but these are predictions. And to me, these are hopeful predictions I'm talking about for myself. I think the Scorpio is going to release at $3.99, and it's going to come out in September. Yup, that's what I think. September at $3.99, that's going to be the price point. Who knows? It might be for $29.99, but I think to get that momentum back that Microsoft so desperately needs, they need to have the console come out at $3.99. If they do that, they're going to fly off the shelf. I can almost guarantee it because they're offering a lot in the console. Now, keep in mind. Microsoft, you have to tell people and show people why they need this. Because once again, if the previous Xbox One and the Xbox One S are going to hold back the Scorpio, then what's the point? You have to get people invested and get them to understand these benefits. 
benefits that they will get when they get games on the Scorpio. As far as Sony goes, man, I think that The Last of Us 2 is a show enough. Doggone show up. Uh, what am I saying? Man, Last of Us 2 was going to show up, God dog. I botched that whole part. Excuse me. But, uh, yeah. Last of Us 2 is going to show up. I don't think it's going to get a release date. But I do believe that the last, gu- I said the last Guardian. God dog, yeah, get it together. I think that uh, God of War is going to be on the stage again with a release date. I think that Spider-Man will get a release date. I think that Detroit, the game Detroit is coming out this year as well as Days Gone. I think that those two games are being released, but at the bare minimum. I do believe that Detroit will be released. I'm hoping, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that that's the, that's the, that's the case. I'm all stuttering. Oh, for one more prediction. Yes, I believe wholeheartedly, and I will admit it if I'm wrong, if it does not happen, I believe that the PlayStation 4 Pro and the PlayStation VR both get price cuts this year. I think that both of those items are going to be retailing for $349.99 permanently. And I also think on both Microsoft side and Sony side that their regular vanilla systems, their consoles will be Knock down to two forty nine ninety nine. That's what I really think is gonna happen. We'll know in two weeks. We'll see what happens. But I wanna hear from you, the listener out there. I wanna know your thoughts, your e three predictions. I want to know who you think has the most to prove at this year's E3. Who has to sink or swim at this year's E3? Who's going to have the better game lineup at E3? Who's going to have the better announcements at E3? I want to hear from you. And as always, listeners, you can do that by calling into the show at 443-261-4607. Or if you don't want to do that and you want to type, you can feel free to type your email, brother or sister, to the Analog Circle Podcast at gmail.com. As always, listeners, I truly truly from the bottom of my doggone heart bone appreciate you guys tuning in every week it is so appreciated thank you for spreading the word the numbers are showing that and it's appreciated but guys i have held up way too much of your time as it is so i'm gonna sign off for this week but that's all right though this week may be over but we will be back next week but until then game players you guys take care and remember it's not about the console it's about the games you guys be safe out there take care bye Thank you.